Hello. I recently went to Uluru. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, it is the famous centre of Australia within the state of the Northern Territory. It's a big, beautiful red rock that is one of the wonders of the world. And I'm sure you've seen photos of this somewhere, but this beautiful, majestic rock that it sticks out of the ground. In fact, more of it, it's like an iceberg. More of it is under the ground than above the ground, but it is a mighty, mighty natural formation. And it's something that really brought me to that sort of state of awe, you know, like, whoa, wow. <laughs> And when I flew into Northern Territory, um, I was immediately taken aback by the, the vividness of the landscape, the colours. I'm a very visual person. And the reds and that deep kind of earthy tone of the soil and the rocks was just beautiful. And then that magnificent great southern blue sky that contrasted with the red and then the, the bushy landscape. It was just absolutely mind-blowing and beautiful. And so I spent a wonderful four days just taking in these um, noteworthy places that Mother Nature has provided for us to, to be inspired, to reconnect with her, to remember um, our unity consciousness and to feel. I really felt that harmony in my cells of my body, the essence of who I am I felt um, resonated more strongly. I think it was probably partly because I was away from the hustle bustle and noise and frequencies um, an interference of uh, a busy suburban life um, and being out in the middle of Australia, there's certainly a lot less going on in terms of our um, capitalist society and the, the busyness than, and the system that people regularly become unconscious within. So it was really quite a, um, a time to check in with myself, check in with my inner guidance system and reattune to perhaps some of the, the subtle voice within my spirit that I hadn't been able to hear when I was busy and distracted in my everyday life. And just be in stillness or just be rather than do for a little while. It was beautiful. I have to admit it was very hot being summer here and off season because of the heat it's about 41 degrees celsius i'm not sure what that is in fahrenheit but it's very hot <laughs> um, and that can be quite oppressive uh, especially during the middle of the day so i did naps i actually napped and for me this is huge i was so i guess proud of myself for napping in fact, I napped the week before I got out there for the first time with uh, a feeling of um, joy and delight that I was napping. And the reason is if you've looked at any of my past content, the theme in my past has always been around this produce, achieve, do kind of programming and this relentless pressure to achieve and to be productive and to be busy. And in 2024, I decided, I intentionally made the decision that I was going to embrace relaxing and resting and consciously making the choice. I don't know about you, but in my past, with that programming of do, 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 I often found that the times that I would be resting were when my body had begun to shut down and overwhelm already. So it was kind of uh, 
a burnout rest, an exhaustion, a fall in a heap and collapse kind of rest. And I decided no more, no more of that in my life. I recognize now, I fully own the belief that, that my life is not about survival. It's an equal balance of these sacred aspects of life too. And I think that was a nice way to begin the year was going out and seeing what is famously considered a sacred rock, Uluru, and um, acknowledging that my life would be embracing the sacred aspects of life moving forward. And, yes, it took until my 40s to come to this realisation or decision that my life needed to be balanced between survival and sacred, a nice equal 50-50 share. And so rest has become important, and not just rest, but full-blown relaxation. Uh, maybe you also struggle with this concept of relaxation, but for me this means that I'm not only just resting my body because it's tired, resting my mind, but I'm resting and then relaxing too. I'm enjoying and delighting in this downtime from producing and achieving. And it's not about a result. It's about the pure enjoyment of the present moment so that I lose track of time and space. So I step out of the concept, my perception of being in a system that is in time so that I lose time and I feel more of who I am because I believe that who we truly are is outside of time, that pure awareness or essence of unconditional love, consciousness. I believe that we can align more with our internal guidance system when we consciously choose to take more time out to relax and play. And I've talked a lot about this, but having said that, it's been my own journey and that's why I talked about it. And so in 2024, I really feel this is a part of me now. I can confidently say I'm okay pausing, taking breaks, relaxing and playing and it feels good. In the past it felt this niggling pressure or guilt would keep me going back to busyness. So it would almost be a waste of brief time pausing at any point. And so I found that now that I, that part of me has been healed. So what I found in my experience, both with my clients and myself, is that when we begin to really validate and acknowledge a wound, a part of us, usually from childhood, that we've avoided being with because it was painful, such as the fact that I learned that love came from producing things, from achieving. And to make that a conscious thing through my journaling process, through my self-awareness practices, to the point where I got to, the, to come to release it. And it no longer is a default strategy in my unconscious mind. And now that part of me that was fractured that went away, that left and hid and became stunted in her growth because she believed that love came from doing. That part has returned and become whole and part of my heart. It's no longer a wound. That is when I feel that I've been able to really embrace being able to stop, relax, pause, play. So I want to encourage you, keep it up. Keep seeking that level of self-awareness around your wounds and your old beliefs and the root traumas that created these programs that are running covertly. Journal, bring it out into the, to the light. 
shed light, illuminate these strategies that are not working, that are disempowering you, that are keeping parts of you fractured and unacknowledged and in the dark. So another part of my trip to Uluru, I met some amazing people. I met a young man who I'd say he was about in his late 20s. He was one of our tour guides. He took us out to Katajuta, which is also known as the Olgas, um, but the orig Aboriginal name, the original name is Katajuta. And this is some beautiful rock formations nearby Uluru. And this is where we got to spend time amongst absolute awe-inspiring um, Gaia creations. And here, this young man who led us on his tour, we stopped for a breakfast and he explained about his quest. Now, I called it a quest as we spoke together later, but he, he talked about this yearning within his heart to find his ancestral lineage and to find his bloodline. And he knew that he was part Aboriginal, that his grandfather was Aboriginal. And not we, as far as I understand, Aboriginals in Australia are the oldest known um, human uh, population in the world. Um, at least, I, I won't quote any figures here. <laughs> but this young man who was so lovely, he, he, um, I think he was very courageous for someone in their twenties who's grown up in Australia. He recognised that it was there was something calling him in his heart to to let go of the conventional security of a regular nine-to-five job and to, to go out and, and find himself in very rural areas um, with the land. And if you uh, know much about the Aboriginal um, creation stories, you would understand this sacred link between the heart and the land. And um, this young man was talking... See, it's beautiful to watch someone when they speak from their heart about their, their drive, their motivation and their passion towards um, their intention in, intentions in life. And this young man was talking about this, this feeling he couldn't shake, that he had to find his lineage and he had to find the roots of his um, uh, everything that has made him who he is. Um, spiritually, physically, and um, personality-wise, um, and he 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 was telling me that you know through just following his heart, even though some things just sounded crazy at times, he would be like, "I've got to go to this town next," and he'd get a job on a farm, and then he'd be like, "I've got to go to this town next," and he'd get a job um, in a mine, or now he's a tour guide. But each time there would be an amazing synchronicity or a serendipitous event. And on the, one of the most recent ones, he actually started speaking to someone who he first he found out they were his cousin and then he found out, of course, that they shared the same grandparent. And so now he is getting closer to his quest to um, discovering um, the essence of who he is in the physical plane, but also and beyond, I would imagine. Anyway, the reason I brought that up is because being living in a very kind of high density city Gold Coast area, I find that when you sit down and have these kind of conversations with people, that they, they don't really this doesn't come up as much. We tend to talk about the weather, or we tend to talk about um, I don't know what's for dinner, or um, you know just sort of chatty things that you go through the motions but for me I've always found it hard to keep up the 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 shallow conversations but the deeper stuff when I try to delve into that people tend to feel a little uncomfortable it's always like what I found is it's generally a rare person that will just want to go deep and talk about heart-based stuff and so it was a real delight to find this young man who just immediately launched into his heart-based quest and we talked about the hero's journey and the Aboriginal walkabout and just how 
we believe more young people, and I, perhaps older people too, I'm certainly not young anymore, but we're going to be listening to our hearts more. We're going to allow the attachments to security, to money, to shelter, to um, future security, which is what we've been brainwashed into believing is the most important thing in our school system training. We're going to start to let that stuff go. And we're going to start to listen to our heart. We can't get to the heart until we really become more self-aware. We start to step into that hero's journey, make the conscious choice to look straight, head facing our wounds and look them in the eye and say, I'm here for you. I'm going to feel you so that we can release them, so that they can stop blocking the, the heart and the wisdom from the heart that we need to be able to release and let go of all of our attachments so we can go on these hero's journeys. We can experience the best we can for our lives. We can finally experience that. We can go on a journey, an adventure, whatever that might be, without being small and afraid and scared to take the first step. So I guess I just wanted to bring that up. I found that that young man very inspiring. It's kind of the reason that I got into coaching and counselling. I want to help others unlock that within them. First, to deal with all the trauma and the programming. Second, to start to attune to the heart's inner guidance system. Third, to take the call of action and move into your quest and go on that journey without fear, with courage, which is the heart. So I thought I'd share that. I hope this has been inspiring. I would highly recommend if you ever get a chance to go out and visit Uluru, go to the Northern Territory, see what it's about. There's nothing like it. I would, I would say nothing like it in the entire world. It's its own unique, special place. And you will find, I believe you will find beauty and insight and inspiration if you do head over there. However you get there, you can drive, you can fly, and I found out a funny fact, actually. I'm sure you, you might appreciate this, but in Australia, we have the world's largest population of camels. They've actually become a pest. They have no predators. They can conserve water for 15 days. They're amazing. And so, oh, sorry, I think they can serve food for 15 days and water for months. But they're very amazing. They're, you can actually, if you can just catch one, in the wild and, and it can be yours, but you're not allowed to release it, which is a funny catch 22. But interesting fun fact. So if you haven't read a camel, or read a, if you haven't ridden a camel, that's another fun thing to do in Uluru. All right. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Have a beautiful day and um, go gently. See ya.